What's going on guys? Welcome back to another breakdown. We got a BB passage here. I am excited for this breakdown. Alright, as always guys, before I go ahead and tell you, you know, how to highlight, how to pick the best answer, how to make the details and figures make sense before I tell you all of that, go ahead and do the passage on your own first. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down here, pause it whenever you need to. Alright, this is the first question. Answer it, pick your answer, <laughs> write it down. Pick your answer, 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 write it down. Hopefully you guys get all of them correct. I believe in you guys. You guys can do this, all right? The MCAT is not that hard. People make out the MCAT to be like this hard, impossible beast that you have to like conquer when really it's not that hard. Like you see this, this is nothing. This is very simple. It's just simply like something inhibits this, this activates this, activates this, that's it, okay? So, here we go. I'm going to break it down right now, but let me drink this water. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. All right, passage seven. Patients requiring transplanted organs are routinely started on a number of immunosuppressive medications to prevent rejection of the transplanted organ. Okay, I'm not going to highlight anything. I am pretty confident in this. I know exactly what's going on, and I'm pretty familiar with this from my content review. Okay. Corticosteroids were the first immunosuppressive agent used in solid organ transplantation. All right, I'm gonna drop something. Okay, so I'll highlight this though. Corticosteroids were the first ones, the first immunosuppressive. Corticosteroids are an immunosuppressive agent. Cool. Their mechanism for action is non specific, thus, they are used in a number of clinical settings for the general anti inflammatory properties. All right. The onset of hyperacute rejection occurs minutes to hours after transplantation and is attributed to pre-existing antibodies. All right, so right away, if an organ is rejected, that's called hyperacute, and that's due to pre-existing antibodies. In contrast, acute rejection occurs days to weeks after transplantation and is a C cell mediated response. Okay, so as soon as rejection happens, that's hyperacute after some days and weeks. That's acute rejection. And that's by a T cell media response. All right. Finally, chronic rejection occurs months to years after transplantation, whereby the organ in question slowly begins to fail. The mechanism of this last type of response is currently unknown and no successful treatment exists. Man, oh man. A three signal model has been described for the activation of T cells. The first signal is provided by binding of the T cell receptor to a short peptide presented by the major histocompatibility complex on an antigen presenting cell. Okay, this you know you should know this from your constant review. You should know what's going on here. The second signal occurs when a T cell co-stimulatory receptor CD28 binds to proteins on the APC. I didn't know it was CD28, so I'll highlight that. All right, the T cell requires a second signal to respond to the antigen. The final signal results from the downstream effects of cytokines that are produced and secreted in response oh, to the effect of the first two signals on a number of important transcription factors. Okay, you guys should be very familiar with this. All right. Um, Okay, I'll show you what's going on real quick. Okay, I'll show you what's going on, on the whiteboard real quick. Okay, so let's say this is your T cell. Okay, this T cell, it's gonna have a receptor, a T cell receptor, okay? Actually, let me draw this a little better, my bad. So you're gonna have this here, let's say, and you're gonna have, let's say, something like this okay all right this is your t cell this is your t cell receptor this is your cd28 okay this is just another protein that's kind of like a receptor all right this is another protein on the cell surface an antigen presenting cell okay so an apc an antigen presenting cell this can be many things okay let's say it's a dendritic cell all right it's going to have an MHC complex, all right? And it's going to have another protein, let's say something like this, 
Okay, this protein is going to recognize CD28. These are going to bind together. And this is the MHC. Okay, the MHC serves on a plate, a fragment of the antigen. Okay, so this is the plate here. And then the food it's serving is the antigen. And the reason why it's food is because the antigen had to be broken down by lysosomes, incorporated in the DNA of the antigen presenting cell, you know, made with a peptide, and only part of the antigen is then displayed. Okay, that's why I call it food, because it's only a little bite out of the whole antigen. All right, and that antigen, let's say it looks like this. Okay, and the MHC is going to connect perfectly with this. Okay, pretend the light goes in here in this pocket. All right, but this MHC displays a peptide of the antigen. That's it. And we need both of these connections here. We call it the double handshake. All right, double handshake. All right, when you have this double handshake, this T cell is now activated. All right, and when it's activated, it secretes cytokines. And these cytokines can then promote the inflammatory response and do many things, okay? So here are the signals. This is the first signal. This is the second here, and this is the third, okay? The three general stages of immunosuppression organ recipients are one induction, two maintenance, and three rejection. Induction occurs preoptively, preoperatively, and typically involves the administration of high dose corticosteroids and monoclonal antibodies such as OKT3, aimed at inhibiting lymphocytes. Okay. The maintenance stage involves long term immunosuppression and is typically required for the life of the organ. As such, there is a large number of medications that are used in the maintenance stage, including corticosteroids, calcineurin, a protein phosphatase inhibitor, anti-proliferative agents, and mTOR. Okay, this is what's used to treat at the maintenance stage. Finally, the treatment of rejection involves giving high-dose steroid pulses and anti-thymocyte antibodies. And it gives the figure here. All right, and I want you guys to really understand this because this is something that a lot of students get confused. Okay. If you understood this, cool. I'm gonna describe it in the passage here. Okay, so like this is the T cell. This is the T cell receptor. That's the first handshake. Okay, and this is your presenting cell, peptide MHC. This is the first handshake. Second handshake is over here, the CD28. Okay. And the third is the cytokines being released here. That's it. A patient receiving a liver transplant has immediate post-operative complications and subsequent blood tests and biopsy results in decay organ failure. Which type of immunity is most likely involved in this process? Well, they told us, all right, that's the hyper, right? The hyper acute rejection that's right away, and this is right away, and it's due to pre-existing antibodies. Antibodies are found in the blood. They're proteins in the blood, so it's a humoral response, okay? Exogenous corticosteroids would have what effect on the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis? Okay, exogenous meaning yeah, you're injecting steroids into you or you're taking a pill for these steroids, okay? You're putting in steroids in your body. That's not normally made inside your body. And if you're doing that, you're going to do negative feedback and you're going to lower corticotropin releasing hormone and you're going to lower adrenal corticotropin hormone. Okay, you're going to decrease both of these because these these activate corticosteroids they tell the adrenal gland to secrete corticosteroids but we already have enough so there's gonna be a negative feedback loop telling them hey we're good we don't need any more so you're gonna have a decrease in that which statement is slash are true regarding antigen presenting cells one the only mhc proteins they express are class two this is wrong okay you can express class one or class two class one binds to cd eight plus cells and class two binds to CD four cells. Okay. They have a direct role in all types of rejection. No, they only have a role in the acute rejection. See acute rejection occurs day to weeks after transplantation and is a T cell immediate response In the hyper acute rejection. You have antibodies acute T cell. So they're not involved in all types of rejection. The dendritic cell is one type of antigen presenting cell. Yes, that is true. Answer is C. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease results from an abnormal inflammatory response in the lungs. 
which immunosuppressant agent is most likely used to treat an exasperation of COPD? All right, abnormal inflammatory. We have a lot of inflammation going on. How do we stop this inflammation? How do we stop it? Cyclosporine, tacrolimus, corticosteroids. Guys, steroids are going to reduce inflammation. Okay, look, immunosuppressive agent. That's what you want to do. Okay. I don't really have to go through these because it's obvious that it's corticosteroids. If you have a question, just comment down below. I'll be more than happy to answer it. Oh, it's corticosteroids. Which of the following medications is likely to inhibit purine synthesis? MPBA. Okay, I'm sure there it's in the figure somewhere here. Okay, where's MPB, MPA? Where is that? Where the heck is that? All right, we're here. MPA is going to inhibit IMP to GMP. IMP is inosine monophosphate. GMP is guanine monophosphate. Guanine is a purine. Therefore, A is correct. Let's look at OKT3. Where's that guy? Right here. It's going to inhibit what? A TCR? That pathway? Hmm. Not really. It's just going to inhibit a TCR. I mean, you could argue and say, hey, it's going to inhibit this, it's going to inhibit this, it's going to inhibit this, and it's going to inhibit, but that's too much. Our MPBA is very. Also, let's say this does work. Let's say this inhibits this, this inhibits this, and then we're synthesizing DNA. That could synthesize some pure pyrimidines. You don't know that. But this directly tells us that it inhibits purines. All right. Cyrolimus? No. That's, no. Tacrolimus? No, same thing. The best one is A. Literally inhibits guanine. It's the best answer. And that's how you do it, guys. It's that easy. This is the TPR exam. This is known to be harder than your regular FL, your AMC FL. And I don't see where it's hard. I don't see it at all. Stop telling yourself that MCAT is hard, guys. It's way more easier than you think. Way more easier. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video.